come to today's lesson, Learn Right Integrated Science. Our previous lesson, we talked about transport system. That there are three main ways through which substances can move into the cells and also come out from the cells. Do you remember? Yes, number one, active transport. Good. Number two, diffusion. Number three, osmosis. We also talk about the definition of diffusion. Do you remember definition? Yes, aha. Uh -huh. So diffusion is defined as the movement of molecules, particles, from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until all the particles are evenly distributed. We're able to establish that diffusion occurs in liquids and gases. Today, we are going to continue from where we left. And under the today's topic, we are going to talk about factors or conditions under which diffusion occurs. Factors or conditions that can affect the rate of diffusion. For this topic, you can find in the approaches, new approaches series, chapter 14, factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Whether the molecules, we said it involves movement of molecules or particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. So whether the particles will move faster or slower depend on certain factors. And these are the factors we are going to discuss today. Number one factor is stirring. Number two is temperature. Then number three is the size and nature. The size and nature of the particle. Then number four, the medium, the nature of the medium. The nature of the medium. These are some of them. I'll write the rest later on. So let me take the first one. That is stirring. How does stirring affect the rate of diffusion? Now I want to demonstrate it to you so that after that you will come out with your own conclusion. I want to fetch water. We have already established that diffusion can take place in liquid or liquids. And in this case, our liquid, we are using water. So I fetch my water. They are of equal volumes. I hope you can see equal volumes of water. Then once again, I want to use my potassium permanganate. This time, I'm going to use the same size so that you understand it better. So this is one grain of potassium permanganate, beaker A, then beaker B. I also put this one into it. Now let's observe them. The particles are moving all right, but I want to stir so that we come out with the differences. So I want to stir that of the B. Look at it. Observe it critically. See that the A, the particles are moving, but it is a very slow pace. But because the B1, I'm staring, the particles are moving at a faster rate. I hope you can see it. Observe it. Does that not mean that the A, the particles will not move or dissolve, but it will take longer time? So what conclusion can you make? Stirring, stirring increases the rate of diffusion because when one stirs, it agitates the particles. And in this case, we are talking about the particles of the potassium permanganate. The particles are agitated and then they move at a faster rate randomly to cover the entire water. So stirring also affects the rate of diffusion. That is, it increases or speeds up the rate of diffusion. Unlike we just leave it without stirring. 
Let me take another example without demonstrating here. When you want to go to class early in the morning, you want to take beverage with your friend. Your friend is using the same cup. You take the same quantities of water, volume of water, and the like. Then you are late to a class. After you have poured everything into the cup, then you decide to stay, and your friend decided that too. you will not stay. Which of them do you think the molecules of the Milo, the milk, and the like will dissolve faster? Yes, the one who stayed. Because when you stay, the Milo, the milk, and the sugar, they will dissolve at a faster rate. And therefore, you can take it on time and go to class. The one who decided not to stay, it will take longer time before these things were dead. Those ingredients that have pour into the cup will dissolve for the person to take it. So stirring also increases the rate of diffusion. Now, the second one is temperature. By the way, what is temperature? What is temperature? Uh-huh. Yes, temperature is the degree of coldness the degree of coldness or hotness of a given body what does it mean the degree of coldness or hotness of a given body that is known as the temperature and what instrument do we use to measure it we use thermometer. It depends on what you want to take. So, how does temperature affect the rate of diffusion? How does it affect the rate of diffusion? Let me use my usual potassium per magnet. Now, I'll put one in the first beaker second one into the second because the same size we want to look at how temperature affects the rate of diffusion now i want to put it on my benzene and ben then light it and see how the temperature them do you think the particles will move faster we are we have applied heat to the one on the right side then the other one on the table we are watching observing which of them do you think the particles will move faster the particles will be agitated without stirring to cover the entire water Remember, we have established that is the movement of particles from a region of higher concentration. So where, where I put the, the grain of the potassium permanganate is known as the higher concentration. And the water is in low there, concentrated. So the particles are moving gradually, gradually from the higher concentrated region to the lower concentrated region. Now let's see. I hope you can see which of them do you think the particles have moved to spread evenly in the water? Which of them? Yes, uh -huh. that is what? The one on the benzene burner. Why? Can you tell me? Yes, it's because we increase the temperature, the temperature of the water. So we see that temperature, if you increase the temperature of the particle of the molecule, it agitates the particles to move faster rate. So we said that temperature increases the rate of diffusion. That is an increase. An increase in temperature increases the rate of diffusion. So in preparation of your beverage, you can use cold water. You can use warm water. So which of them do you think the particles will diffuse at a faster rate? Yes. That's the use of warm water. That is why in the afternoon, if you are preparing beverage, you use cold water. It takes longer time. Even the particles will not work yet, dissolve. But if you add, you just increase the temperature of the water, you see that they dissolve at a faster rate 
uniformity, uniform measure, then we take it and then drain. So temperature also affects the rate of diffusion. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion. We are now moving on to another factor. And what is it? Can you tell me? Yes, that is the nature, the size and nature of the particle. The size and nature of the particle. Now, I want to fetch my water and then demonstrate it as we did for the first one and then the second one. So I'm going to... Uh -huh. So I hope from today to go, whenever you want to prepare your beverage, you not use cold water, but rather use warm water because the temperature, once the temperature of, the, of it has been increase, it will facilitate it to dissolve at a faster rate. I said we are now moving on to the size and nature. The size, how big or how smaller the molecule you are dealing with is. And I want to use my usual potassium per magnet. So, Yes, I have to have some here. Yeah, I'm going to grind. So I hope you can see it. Are they of the same size? No. Let me change this one so that you not conclude that, madam, one was bigger than the other one. So look at the sizes. I said, how big or how smaller the particle you are dealing with is known as the size. So I hope you've seen them. OK. Then I want to grind one of them. That is this one. Then after that, I'll pour it into the beaker with the water. Remember, we've established that Diffusion can take place in liquid. So I've turned it into a powdery form. I want to pour it into this beaker. Then observe it gradually. Whilst I take the one in the purple form into the first beaker. Then observe them. Which of them do you think the particles are moving at a faster rate? The molecules or the potassium per magnet? Observe them critically. Oh, it's obvious that the one that was grinded, that was turned into powder. The particles have moved at a faster rate. So how does it affect the rate of diffusion? The one that was grinded, it has a large surface area, and therefore it has a larger part of them having contact with the medium, that is the water. That is why it was, or the particles were able to move faster than the beaker A. Okay, so we are saying that uh, the nature of the molecule or the particle that are dealing with, the particles of gas, they diffuse faster than the particles of liquid. Why? If you look at the particles of gases, they are not wide, they are widely uh, spaced out. And because of that, they can move randomly at a faster rate as compared to liquid.
your camphor, just put one ball of it into the water. So the water is serving as the liquid. Then the other one, you just leave it either in your troubles or your cupboard. Then you'll be observing. Then see which of them will dissolve or diffuse at a faster rate. Is it the one put in the water or the one that has left in what? In the air. Because we said that particles in the air, they move faster than the particles in the water. So you can observe it at home. In our next meeting, we come out with our observations and conclusions. So these are some of the factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Whether diffusion will be faster or slower depend on these factors. All these lectures or lessons or the notes can be found in new approaches. As I said earlier on, chapter 14. And the other related questions, they are all there with solution. So if you haven't got a copy yet, please don't delay. Get your copy. And the price is very, very moderate. You can get it from all the other bookshops, wherever that you find yourself. So I hope by next time, you might have gotten a copy of it. Today, we talk about factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Talk about stirring, talk about temperature, the size and nature, and the like. Now, take the following questions. Question number one. Let's three factors, conditions, that affect the rate of diffusion. That is number one. Then number two, how does stirring affect the rate of diffusion? Try your hands on these two questions in our next meeting, then we discuss them. Thanks. Thank you.